here's the last one. Last one, let's be let's let's write our function in vertex form. So in vertex form, it looks like this. Y equals A x minus h squared plus k. Plus k. That's better. Okay, so this part that's in parentheses is going to come from, that's right, completing the square. Now, when you complete the square, when we completed the square as uh, a method to solve a quadratic equation, our equation was equal to zero. And so whatever we added to one side, we could just easily add to the other side. But that's not the case here anymore. We have y equals something. So we don't want to put anything over there with the y. We want to keep it just y equals. So here's what we do instead. It's kind of like this. Let me write over here in the corner. I'm going to write right underneath the flipping math logo. Would you agree, if I have this equation, y equals x, what we've done before when we completed the square is we added the same number to both sides. So if I had x, I could add 2 to this side. As long as I added 2 to the left-hand side, it was OK. All right, but that's not going to work here because I don't want y plus 2 on the left side of the equation. So the other way that I'm going to do this is like so. Ouch like so. All right, no, now I'm going to keep y equals, and then I have the x plus 2, assuming like this is some number that's complete in the square, and then to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract it right afterwards. So now those 2's cancel out, and we're back to the original equation. That's the method that we're going to use. So let's try that on the first one. So first of all, this 17, let's push it off to the side, kind of ignore it for right now y equals, in parentheses, x squared minus 8x. We're only completing the square on these two, plus a blank. Whatever I added to that side of the equation, I'm going to go ahead and subtract it from that same side of the equation, and then bring down my plus 17. So now let's complete the square. Take half of that. I get negative 4, square it, and I get 16. So, to balance that out, just subtract 16 right behind it. And it's like I did nothing. So you might be asking yourself, well, why am I even doing that? Well, that's just so, that's what we have to do to complete the square. Our equation is going to look different, uh, but it's still exactly the same equation. So finally, our equation looks like this. y equals x minus 4 squared, and then add those two things up, plus 1. If you were to expand all this out, of course it would match up with this y equals x squared minus 8x plus 17 in standard form. All right, let's try the same kind of thing on number 2. It's a slightly more difficult because we have this a value of a 2. All right, so we're still going to shove that 25 off to the side there. And when I go to complete the square, I can only complete it when the leading coefficient's of 1. So we're going to have to pull that 2 out. It's going to pull it out of just these two terms, not the 25, the 25 we're going to push to the side. So x squared plus 12x plus my blank minus a blank, and now bring down the 25. I need a plus sign in there. Plus 25. There we go. Now let's complete the square here. Take half of that. 6 squared up. 36. Yep. So should I just subtract 36 out here? No. No, because I didn't really subtract 36. What I, or add 36. I added 2 times 36, and 2 times 36 is 72. So that's what I have to subtract on the outside here. 72. So that's what you, you really have to be careful of whenever you have to factor out that GCF from those first two terms. Um, you have to distribute it back through before you subtract the number. So y is equal to 2, parentheses, x plus 6 squared, and then minus, I get 72 minus 25, bring in 7, and this is 6, and then 40, 47? 
What a weird thing. 47. So this is this is kind of handy because I mean automatically you could get the coordinates of the vertex, the vertex being at negative six, comma negative forty-seven. Have fun graphing that one. So let me give you a pro tip on this one here. And um, so first, whenever we're trying to put it in uh, vertex form, pro tip number three here, you're going to separate the constant term from everything else. going to push that off to the side. Now, if you have a GCF, so step number two, factor out whatever that leading coefficient is, whether it's a GCF or not. On this example, 4 goes evenly into that 24, so you could pull it out pretty easily. Um, I don't know why that thing is squared on the outside there. Just ignore it for right now. Sit here. Here, let me, let me do this. Just ignore that for right now. Um, yeah, anyway, if it was, say, 23, you still have to pull it out, and then you'd have a fraction on the inside, but sometimes that's unavoidable. Okay, so now... Uh, the next step is, of course, you want to, oh, man, i got to cover up this again. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, complete the square here, so take half of that, negative 3, square it up is 9. So you're going to add 9 inside there. Whatever you added on the inside, we have to subtract on the outside. Are we going to subtract 9? No, 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 no. It's 4 times 9, which is 36, so we have to subtract out a 36. All right, so then finally, just uh, clean this thing up and uh, complete the square there, or write it as in factored form there. So y equals 4 times x minus 3 squared. Now the squared makes sense. Oh, I have to get rid of this one too. Okay, there we go. Oh. Uh. Anyway, so y equals 4 times x minus 3 squared plus 13. And the vertex very easy to spot 3, 13. What do you think? You think you can handle it? You think you can handle these two problems? These are the last two. Once you're done with them, we're done with today's lesson. So give those a try. Pause it. Give, me, give, give yourself a couple minutes and then uh, come back and check. See what you got. So probably seem like I gave you ones that were a bit more of a challenge. Are these the answers that you got? Ooh. Hmm. Not very impressed with that color choice, guys. Um, well, we'll just have to work with it. Okay, so on the first one, uh, you, you do want to pull that negative out of the first two terms. You don't pull it out of the three. Just shove the three over to the side. You'll deal with it later. Now, that negative makes this thing a little tricky. Because when you complete the square, even though you had plus 9 out there, if you distribute the negative to it, it makes it minus 9. So it's as if you subtracted 9. So to counteract that, you have to add the 9 on the outside of the parentheses. Huh? Tricky. So then finally you get y equals negative, x plus 3 quantity squared, and then uh, plus your 6. Number 2... You're going to factor out a 3 from the first two terms, not the 4, just shove it off to the side. Now when you do that, you create an odd middle term. Sometimes it's unavoidable, which means when you take half of it, you're going to get a fraction there. Keep it as a fraction, square it up, 9 fourths, but distribute the 3 back to it, and you get 27 fourths. So I added 27 fourths, you have to subtract 27 fourths to counteract those two things. And then this is me down here getting a common denominator and adding those two things up. So your final equation is y equals 3 times x minus 3 halves squared minus 11 fourths. What is the vertex? The vertex is 3 halves comma 11 fourths. Ooh, that color really brightens that up a bit. All right, well, that was it. So in this lesson... We were graphing quadratic functions when they were in vertex form and in intercept form. Much, much simpler than whenever it was in um, standard form, because in standard form, you had to find the vertex and the intercepts. And both of these forms give you at least one of those things, so it's, it's pretty nice. And then finally, taking our quadratic equation, whatever it is, and writing it into either standard form, 
intercept form or vertex form. So here's your assignment. Make sure you uh, print out your little approximating area worksheet for next time. And uh, in case you're wondering, right underneath Rowan there, his little quote, um, I asked him to say parabola, and he says, Powabola. And then he commenced to explain to me that it was a pretty hard word to say. So just saying. Oh, yeah. See you in class.